here is where the journey starts and where the legend lives. I can tell there's a fan in town because it's a stranger, you know what I mean? And I had one girl said, well, she felt kind of funny walking down Main Street. She said that everyone knew that she was a James Dean fan in town. I said, don't worry about it. We have them every day. In Fairmont, Indiana, where James Dean grew up, it doesn't take long to start a conversation about him. I've got two grandkids, 11 and 12, and they're crazy about James Dean. And they say, well, Papa, tell us about James Dean. Tell us what, what did he do? James Dean is Cal, the wildest boy you've ever met. What he did was become a movie star in East of Eden, in Giant, and especially in this 1955 film, Rebel Without a Cause, Dean defined the look and mannerisms of a new generation of post-war teenagers who were rebelling against authority, feeling restless and misunderstood. You're tearing me apart! What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes. Jim back. happened at a, at a particular moment in time when the American teenager was on the verge of a revolution. Martin Landau and Dean were close friends as young actors in New York. You're talking about somebody who looked like an all-American boy who had all manner of unrest inside. And uh, Jim, I think all of us had that, but it sort of uh, struck a note. Hmm. Come on, let's go see what we're driving. Dean's look became part of a code of appearance for teens. The jacket, the moody attitude, the slouch, and most of all, the eyes. There was something in his distant gaze that made people want to know what was behind it. Because he died at 24 in the wreck of his sports car, that look has never aged, and James Dean has never gone out of style. His image is fixed like an icon in the public mind, based on just three motion pictures, a few television shows, and some well-known photographs and poses. Hey, little rebel, we love you. We're your fans. We'll always be true. We Every year, fans who remember Dean from their past youth and fans still young who find the characters he played just as true to their feelings come to Fairmont in September, the month he died, to pay their respects at his grave. One fan was so taken with Dean that he moved to Fairmont and opened the James Dean Gallery to display his collection of memorabilia. It's a, hopefully a lasting tribute. He's the eternal teenager. Would you describe this as an obsession, or, or do you have a dealer's eye for it as well? Uh, I guess it would be an obsession, yeah, sure. How did James Dean become such an obsession? And was he the same to the people who knew him as he was to the fans who made him an idol? That portrait still changes, depending on who remembers him and from when. He was raised on this farm, taken in by his aunt and uncle after the death of his mother. Marcus Winslow was Dean's young cousin, whose memories are straightforward and warm. He was just like an older brother to me, and you know, he was a pretty normal guy. He came from a small town and, and a, an average family, and you know, he had the, the willpower and the determination, the confidence in himself to, to push himself. And, and get to the point that he was. The place where Dean gave his first public performances, the old Fairmont Indiana High School, is vacant and falling apart now. To the woman who taught his speech classes here, Adeline Nall, Dean was far from average. He was a young genius who already had what good actors need. His power of concentration was terrific. Going into uh, hibernation and uh, wanting time to himself to concentrate on the role. And he had so many little uh, things that he added. And he was so natural. It didn't surprise anyone that he left Fairmont, first for a year of drama studies at UCLA, and then for New York, to become part of a serious young generation of actors exploring their craft. Say, want to have more fun? 
Then come on along and let's join the Pepsi crowd. One of the earliest paying jobs Dean got was in this commercial. He's the kid on the far right. It may look a little out of character from the image we know, but friends remember this side as well. Pepsi Cola hits the spot. A big, big bottle and it's got... Jimmy, to me, was a, a playmate. We played in the streets of New York. Actress Liz Sheridan shared an apartment with Dean for several months, and they were joined by a third roommate, writer and producer Bill Bast. We spent a lot of time in the park, and we used his, the bullfighter's cape that he <laughs> dragged around with him. I was a dancer at the time, and I liked to dance in the middle of the street, so we would always wait till the street cleaners would come, and it was 6 o'clock in the morning, and we were always dancing. He could be really a stinker and get into a lot of mischief and, be, and behave badly, but it was half the time, 90% of the time, was affectation. It was trying out a scene on you. If he met someone new, there was an intensity that was unbelievable. He, just, he screwed into your eyes and he stayed there until he got everything out of your brain. It was like that. And he knew how to use what he got. Martin Landau remembers Dean gleaning advice on how to play a TV role he was rehearsing. You're just a dirty old man in a dirty old hash joint. Not, you're not God. One particular role, Jim really didn't have a handle on this uh, rather explosive young man who, who seemed benign and then would kind of explode. And um, while we were talking, he had took his collar and put it in his mouth, which was a habit of his. I thought you were my friend. I looked at that and I said, that's well, yeah, it. That's your mother's breast. You and his mother had died when he was very young. And, and emotionally, as well as visually, it was a very interesting idea. And uh, he said something like that. <laughs> and then ran back to, the, uh, to NBC. And he did that several times on the show, really to great effect. Yeah. Joey, he's trying to help. This guy wouldn't help a puppy out of a puddle. You know, he takes those so by the time he moved west to make East of Eden in March of 1954, Dean had begun to develop an extraordinary talent. This screen test for East of Eden shows how Dean could hold the screen just with his eyes, projecting a range of conflict and emotions that didn't seem to be acting at all. It's all the money you lost in the lettuce business. He was so new to Hollywood that he lived on the lot while he played the role that made him a star. I made it for you. Cal, you will have to give it back. No, I, I, made, it, I made it for you, Dad. I, I want you to have it. Dean have did have a rebellious back. streak, and it came out quickly in his dealings with studio executives. This telegram from a Warner Brothers publicity man describes Dean as impossible in dealing with the press and concludes in telegram lingo, he needs good scrubbing behind ears. His new income, $10,000 for East of Eden, was large enough so that he could indulge his Indiana-bred passion for racing by purchasing a Porsche. You've won a few races, haven't you? Oh, one or two. Just as he completed filming Giant and a studio ban on his driving in race cars was lifted, Dean was featured in a public service trailer for auto safety that was one of the last times he appeared in front of cameras. Take it easy driving. The life you might save might be mine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> on September 30th, 1955, Dean was on his way to an auto race, driving his Porsche toward a dangerous Y-shaped California highway intersection. The second car turned in front of his from a fork in the Y. According to a passenger in Dean's car, his last words were, he's got to see us. In his 24 years, Dean had fused together elements of a small town upbringing, a New York bohemian existence, life in the fast lane. He was moody and nonconformist, charming and studious, still too young to pin down. When he died, the image that would be made from those elements passed out of his control. What determined that image most powerfully was the release only four days after his death of Rebel Without a Cause. That timing and the publicity that followed it seemed to settle the legend of Dean as the Rebel. That was the one dimension selected to represent an otherwise complex personality. Now, I mean, Jim is basically a picture on a, on a T-shirt. I mean, it's gotten, with each generation, 
the person has gotten more and more lost. And because James Dean would never grow older, the image of the young rebel was one he could never betray. His likeness still comes off the assembly lines next to symbols of the most current fans. The commercial market in James Dean products at the beginning of the 90s is estimated to be worth in excess of a million dollars a year, more than Dean earned in his lifetime. In all parts of the world, the image is celebrated. These young tourists from Japan visiting a bust of Dean at the Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles know exactly the pose to strike for photographs. So do millions of young people who have memorized the posture, the gestures, the mannerisms. I want you to walk like him. I want you to talk like him. I memorize every line from every scene. I comb my hair straight back. I wear nothing but black like it was my life plan up there on the These aspiring actors showed up in Hollywood last spring for screen tests to play James Dean himself in a biographical film titled The Legend. Uh, number eight. And what else did you tell me, Sam? Oh, my age, 24. The image the world knows loomed in gigantic proportions over the scene. If there was room left for other memories, they were hard to find. I want to play the part of James Dean because it's sort of like becoming a legend in himself. I still get letters from people, and they're just, they just idolize the boy. You got your name and address, phone number. 3712 Beverly Boulevard, number 2, uh, 382. The energy was enormous, and the hunger. You need to speak up a little bit. <clears throat> the Jimmy that I knew was very gentle. Loved animals and loved children and loved old people. And I would like to be in a picture because I don't have anything to do right now at this time. He was not a uh, rebel at all, really. A couple of reasons why I should play the role of James Dean is because I am James Dean. I've been living it for most of my life. So I got lucky in the fact that when I was growing up, people said I looked like James Dean. I think he would get a big kick out of it uh, on a lot of levels because it's, you know, it's something he wanted. It's nice if, if it's related to the work. I think that's how Jim would like to have been remembered. And um, the rest of it is nonsense. <laughs>